What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of uh, the Mindless Horror Podcast presenting Scare Actor Appreciation Month 2022. Uh, it has been quite a little bit. We've had a little um, break of me recording. It's been a while, so let me uh, jump back into this again. With me today, the one, the only, Selena Blackwater. Hello. I, I, I felt like saying that. I mean, you just when you say the last name too, it just it feels like something you'd hear like as like a like a like a grand opening to something or something with like a, a creepy whisper. I mean, the name is amazing. First and foremost, before we get started, uh, the name. I mean, that is such an um, amazing name. What is the uh, the meaning behind it for you? Of course. Well, first, thank you, by the way, for having me. Um, so in all honesty, like my drag in general has always been, you know, as one god warrior once said dark sided basically (laughs) and in in all honesty like blackwater i really wanted to last name that sort of sounded like you know old money but at the same time some sort of you know a family in like a edgar Allan poe or a lovecraft novel you know what i mean one that just all to ruin by the end of the of the last chapter you know (sighs) Just something that just feels dark. Yeah, and it fits in, especially with the uh, the streets of Ghost Town. Um, you had mentioned earlier, yeah, it is. Ver- it kind of lends itself. Yeah, it does. And, and in the streets of Ghost Town, you had the opportunity to scare this there this year. First and foremost, how was that? I mean, that's that's the iconic street zone that started it all, right there. It is. It is. I. This was really a dream come true. I mean, it was nerve wracking first off, but Like, once I get into the groove of things, you know, it just, you know, it just came a lot more natural. I was able to, you know, fall into the usual good patterns with not only this new character, but just with my new surroundings. It really was, you know, the the chef's kiss once everything just came to align perfectly. A hundred percent chef's kiss. I mean, we got to uh, witness you walking around Ghost Town this year, and it was just, I mean, we love, for, for ones, we love knots. We love Ghost Town. I mean, Ghost Town is, is is the zone right there, and you know it, it, it's really hard to compare that to anywhere else because like that's so unique to its to its to its own. It's almost has per own personality and whatnot. Um, and I mean, with the, right, I mean, with the whole you know, like with Ghost Town in particular, like I mean, it's been said before, you know, those yeah. buildings are there, like from you know the opening, it kind of sort of you know imbued its own spiritual energy that one scary farm you know, comes around and just kind of unleashes not only with, you know, its buildings and its atmosphere, but with us as the monsters. Mm-hmm. That's what we're really feeding on in all honesty. Oh, 100%. And, and and like you said, those buildings all have history. You know, it goes back all the way to when this first started. I mean, it, it was just a, literally a zone and, and a couple of boxes. It, go, it went from that to an entire theme park just filled of haunts and, and nightmares and stuff. So for you as, as kind of looking at, like, um, you know, ghost town and whatnot. When you think back, when was it that you kind of knew you wanted to scare at knots or just scare in general? I mean, in all honesty, like when you're going as a guest with at least some, you know, long term goal of saying, Hey, I'm going to I want to scare here. I mean, the first place you walk into is ghost town. That's the first impact that you get as a, you know, a hopeful scare actor here. Right. So honestly, like I've been going to Scary Farm ever since, what, 2003 when I was, like, what, 12 years old? Okay. But it wasn't, like, what, late high school when I thought, you know what, I could do this. I really can. And then, again, it was, what, when 2009, like, right before I, uh, right when I started my first year of college, I was like, you know what, this is where I want to be. Pinpoint it right there. I just didn't know what I was going to do because every character there is so unique and I find out, you know, later on as I'm actually working there, like, you know, like what, 10 years later that right. a lot of the times you get to create your own identity. Yeah. And that's what I love about that. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. And, and um, I, I, I know you're you're really big into the world of, of, of drag and whatnot. So how did you find the uh, amazing, you know, the, even with Han, I always say like drag, all this and stuff. In the end, it's all live entertainment. It's all live like theatrical productions and whatnot. Um, what was the, the biggest uh, for you, the comparison to see uh, those two worlds kind of meet and collide with one another? Well, I mean, 
like I said, I've been going ever since 2003. And even as like, like as an artist in general, like I, I went to, I, I was a dancer from a very early age and going to Scary Farm kind of, you know, like fueled and sort of, you know, dictated, you know, the idea of art that I was going to be creating from an early age. And once I found drag, I mean, it just became more or less, you know, a shoe and that Scary Farm with all the horror, all the gothic, you know, beauty that came from there, ironically, <laughs> it would definitely, you know, help dictate Scary Farm. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was a match made in hell, and I loved it. <laughs> match made in hell. I actually like that one. That was a good one. <laughs> it's that an oldie, good. but a goodie. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> So, uh, t- uh, talk to me about going into this year. I mean, the anticipation getting to the to finale of you finding out you're you're in Ghost Town. Like, what were your nerves like going in through the audition process? And and was this the first time you've you've done something like this as far as an audition for a haunt or whatnot? Or how did this whole process go for you this year? Well, for auditioning into you know Ghost Town, like when you're going in for an audition, you like you try to you know push yourselves or at least push it for the creative creative team, I'm sorry, to, you know, let them see you in a spot in Ghost Town. I mean, we'll say for something like Forsaken, which I had done previously for the past three years, ever since right. it opened, they, you know, have some sort of idea as to what you could bring to that specific zone. Same with Goring 20s. You know, it's whatever they can see the best fit for you. But going into Ghost Town, it was... It was definitely, you know, blank slate, clear vision, white canvas. So right. I really wanted to make an impression and impact with something that I had been cooking up. But surprise, surprise, like I get into Ghost Town, I get the call while I'm actually at work at Knott's, <laughs> like on my lunch break. And I was like, oh, hello. Hi there. We would like to offer you uh, the title Billy uh, Ghost Town Cool or Gruesome, sorry. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Like I had to, you know, limit how much I could curse since I'm still right. backstage. But, <laughs> but I mean, again, again, like I find out later that just a gruesome is just a, a placeholder from there. You can create to whatever your heart's content is just within the storyline that uh, Ghost Town has. So I just went balls to the wall with something. Yeah. Uh, tell me about it. This was a, a fantastic year for, I think, uh, uh, of of the of the scaring world all around. I mean, I I went to a, many different haunts and and everyone just gave it their a, uh, their a one, like, it was amazing. And then coming to you know a place like Ghost Town, you know, this was like the year for knots. I mean, there was a lot of new faces out on uh, mm-hmm. different zones and in the mazes and whatnot. We had some mazes leaving, you know, we had some zones leaving, but. We had a lot of new faces out there, and that was the fun part about seeing who was new and and and, and who was uh, working on a two point version of their character or whatnot, and mm-hmm. to see the new story and the new blood getting added to the, to the world of, of Ghost Town, and and I think that's what's fun about this haunt. You guys really get to contribute as to where uh, this story and your chapter fits into this uh, this story, and I think that I mean how fun it, it has to be as far as creative goes. It has to be like a creative dream come true right there. It really is like you are basically creating an identity and a visual identity to, you know, add to this. I'm going to say a melting pot, this gumbo that is, you know, Scary Farm as a whole. Right. Especially if you're in a zone like Ghost Town. You are the first impact. You are the first, you know, people that the guests see. Once you go through under those signs, you see, you know, death on one side you see our bird on the other you see merrick with his thunder jug right in front of you yeah. shaking it and going back can we curse on here yes we can of course you see him going bat fucking shit <laughs> fucking crazy <laughs> right in front of you shaking his his thunder jug and whispering all the insanities and nightmares into your ears it's like these are the impacts that you that stay with you the longest as you go throughout the whole park, the whole farm, the whole haunt. Yeah. Keyword haunts. That's what it is. Oh, It'll yeah. haunt you. Yeah. No, it's one of those things for me where I walk through Ghost Town and you mention those and I can just kind of see them and you hear them. Like, and you don't even have to like 
you just talk about it and it's just one of those things that make this haunt this high and you know walking into those gates walking through that first zone in ghost town you're, you're gonna hear and see all these chaotic but beautiful things that only come once a, once a season i mean to be a part of that it, and just walking through it as guests but to be a part of it just must be like i said magical i mean because it's like i said you're contributing to this story and and not to mention with the 50th anniversary coming next year you get to leave Ooh, your yeah. mark you know what i mean and, and keep keep it growing so going into this year what was like uh what would you say the biggest uh challenge that you overcame from the beginning of the year all the way to the end of the season in all honesty the big challenge that i had to overcome was honestly you know my my own my own nerves honestly going into this yes i was excited but the whole time like i was fucking nervous this is you know the epitome of you know just the haunt culture in general this is like this is a goal for a lot of scare actors not just at knots but all around they are really trying to you know put their foot in the door here i i'm not trying to brag here but i made it yeah. i made it in ghost town i achieved that goal that i set for myself years ago so i'm trying not to fuck it up <laughs> i am you know, trying to tread on eggshells while you know you know making friends with my superiors more or less i'm all the while i mean i actually am you know connecting with people right but I guess my biggest regret is just not letting my guard down much sooner because all like throughout the whole season, I'm getting so much feedback, so much positive, you know, reception, not just from, you know, the guests, but from my fellow ghost town monsters. And not every single time I was able to, you know, take it all in because I'm wondering to myself, how can I make this better? Like, is there something wrong with like, you know, a hemline on my skirt or is there a way that it could be, you know, creeping and lurking that would you know make a bigger impact what could i do to make this better but i learned you know along the way that if you're not having fun you're not doing it right and once i reminded myself of that it was the best time Just a smooth you know honestly. yeah exactly. oh 100 percent. i mean i i and that's a lot of you know i hear that a lot too is once you just you know kind of you have it all under control. You have to relax and everything. It's just, it's so much easier and it just becomes so much more fun. It, and and breath before you go out there definitely helps. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. And, and you know, I got to go, it, it was, it was cool to see, um, a variety of kind of situations go down as far as weather wise this year. I mean, this was a, an interesting <laughs> one to say the least. I, I don't think I've ever been at a haunt where it was like downpouring and I was just like, well, this kind of sucks. I can only imagine how they feel because they're not only in makeup, but they're in costume too. In all honesty, those nights where it did rain fucking cats and dogs, those are the nights where we came the most alive. Like, yeah. Like, in all honesty, like going back to my first year, 2018, when I was in Forsaken, there was one Friday night where it just rained cats and dogs. We had thunder and lightning. Now that, now that was like, that was like the perfect chef's kiss that was the best night that i had scaring but going into that one weekend for us this year in ghost town yeah it was wet yeah it was rainy i mean it may not have you know thematically fit for us but it was still a gay old time <laughs> but no it was it was great right i mean even backstage we're all just fooling around but we had like you know canopies set up but we also had like an extra one that was you know, bowing over because of the of the rain that we had collected. People, you know, give themselves showers and everything. It was right. Just, but no, like I guess the only thing that I didn't like about those nights was just not being able to slide. Yeah. Me in particular, because you know, I guess it is a safety hazard, but also for me, it's just a safety precaution because I'm also doing this whole like the majority of the season in heels. Right. <sighs> but, oh man. Yeah, those are how how is that for you too? I know I I mean you you talk about the hills thing. I mean it goes back to even watching Jurassic World and watching Bryce Dallas Howard do it the entire movie. You know what I mean? Like how was that for you? Well, I mean I've been in drag for what over eleven years now. Maybe I'm also a dancer by trade. So right, you know having all you know you know the strength in your calves and your thighs going into you know something that gets you onto your knees and right back up again like sliding. 
you gotta, you know, you gotta stretch before you even get out there. You gotta stretch to your, you know, your calf, you know, stretches, you know, get onto your toes and back again, back and forth. A lot of people, you know, ask me like, how the hell are you doing that? It's just, I don't know, for me, it just became, you know, muscle memory because this is the kind of thing that I've been doing for years by this point. Right. But I'm, <laughs> I am also getting older. I can't keep doing this forever. So I know that I'm having to pace myself. So after what, two nights or so, I told myself, you know what? I'm going to bring my flats with me too. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I had an extra pair of, you know, sneaker styles. Uh, slider shoes so i told myself and my lead you know what i'm gonna do the first half of the night in heels then i'm just gonna finish out the second half in flats just so everybody that comes in has already seen you know the the impact the, the illusion with the heels right but now i can relax and give them scares and end the night strong you that's know what actually, i mean that, no that's a genius idea to save you and it saves you like not having to you know kill yourself the entire night you're not even killing yourself a lot, and then by the end of the night you have comfort. So I mean, it's it's a it's a win win for you. You get the. I was about to say, I'm already dead by this point. <laughs> <laughs> like, like like I always tell people, what is sleep? We're gonna sleep when we're dead anyway. Exactly. You know? I mean, that's what monster energy drinks are for. Yeah, we got energy <laughs> drinks and oh man. Oh, uh, that's. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, Ghost Town, for me, there's so many uh, unique characters, and, and with that comes a lot of awesome interactions. For you, what was some of the most uh, memorable and fun interactions you had with certain characters this year? Well, first and foremost, Merrick. In all honesty, like, at least what, once a weekend or so, it would always be, like, you know, when he goes into, you know, up close to a guest, he whispers nothing but, you know, the like, the worst nightmares you know let go into the anger let go into you know your insanity he did that to us too i mean for me in all that honesty i didn't see it much as like you know a character moment i reacted to it like a character moment but for some reason he always just knew when to bring in it because that would be the times where i would be you know cooling down or you know mentally or physically crashing right. that would be the energy boost right there that i needed <laughs> it really was like a like a good benefit for me as a physical actor here um besides that um one of our other new uh our new rookies this year please have her on at some point our nurse okay she was amazing to run with creating such a big impact with in my eyes like next to nothing with, you know, you know, physical interactions. Like, yeah, she swooped. Yeah. She was able to get scares in on a physical level, but just looking at that, like if you're going down fog alley and you see that walking towards you without her even having to do anything, I can imagine that could scare a fuck ton of people with nothing That's that, true. that and our gar gargoyle, those two are like my ride or dies. I love those two. Oh man. Both on and off the streets. Those, those are some of the freaking scariest characters, yeah, that I did see, especially walking down Fog Alley for the most oh, part. Yeah. If you caught it on a good on a good time where like you couldn't really see anything, uh, with it filled with fog. I mean, it's it's just like that thing comes right up to you and you're just like, What the hell? You know, exactly. it's just it's so it's so, it's the eyes. It's the eyes, you know, it is. It's awesome though. I mean, that's why we're in this business because we that's why we love coming to these events oh, because yeah. it's 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 just a whole nother world i couldn't even explain it um but i i i absolutely love going through ghost town every single year i like to just sit there and just kind of observe and watch to see what people how they're contributing to their storylines and whatnot and and, mm -hmm. and tying into that overall storyline um and i loved obviously with with 2019 kind of tying all that whole thing in with origins and kind of the hanging oh, and whatnot. Fine. You know, that was, it's always been just a fascination of just like those shared universes, kind of a bigger, a bigger universe out there. And, and especially with the 50th going into kind of like looking forward to like what your character, what would you want to do for the 50th? Like, how is it that you would love to bring a 2.0 back to the streets of, of, of Ghost Town? Is there, is there things that you thought about already that even during the season you're like, you know what, this might be something I'd do for 2.0 next year? Oh, definitely. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know when it started coming around, 
at least in my mind, but one idea that I really had with this, with unfortunately with the hollow leaving us this year, I really wanted to create some sort of, you know, triad, like find two other, you know, male presenting female drag preferably um, to, you know, represent like two other crystals and not to, you know, toy or taunt around with copyrights, but create our own, you know, Dandrons and sisters, uh, you know, dynamic, right? You know, camp more frights, you know. Yeah. But I had this idea because when I was talking, I forgot who I was talking to. I think it was one of our superiors, but they were like, "If that happens, I think it'd be really great if you talked in your own like weird language when you're contacting each other." I was like, "Ooh, that'd be cool." <laughs> Come up with something. A made up language, then just straight up switch to our guests and just charge threefold yeah something like that like i'm doing amethyst i would see someone like what doing a ruby and on the other side i see someone doing sapphire even yeah 100 (laughs) percent. ideas like that i mean definitely refining the costume more you know at one point i thought about adding a spine with crystals but i don't don't know we'll see let's see where the crystals take us you know yeah a lot of crystal healing, crystal hurting. I don't know. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I I also one of the things I loved about your character this year was the movement. The movement was was I mean when it looked like you kind of like would turn and crack your neck, like or just bend backwards. Like those are some iconic. Talk to me about how the movement came to be and and what was some of the inspiration behind that. Well, in all honesty, like the idea of this character definitely came about. Like she was the geo shop owner. She gets killed, dumped off in the same, you know, mine that she found those crystals and those geos. And over time, these geos just start protruding and growing out of her body. And I thought about this idea where, you know, her skeleton comes out and is like fusing with, you know, these geodes. So I thought maybe that does something with, you know, my, with how I walk, how I would turn around, even like how flexible this character would be i just it is a little bit of a trait that i you know would do when i was a pallbearer in forsaken but i think here i was able to you know thematically integrate it with my character right and again with the stamping of the neck same idea but i think with the hair Mm -hmm. it really worked a lot more it was a lot more you know viscerally visual yeah. And then just, you know, just like, wait, wait, one second, one second. And then just straight up, just bring it back over. Yes. I think what definitely helps is the gloves. Just time it right. One style dance I'd like doing is flamenco. So there would be a lot of times where I would just like, just treating the metal tips on my fingers, just like half the nets, just for, just out of, you know, it was one of my little, you know, triggers, my, my little, you know, nuances, my quirks, if you will. I just, started you know maybe there's a way i could integrate this somewhere and wait a second <laughs> Ooh, let's try it right now and click there it is it was right there. and i was like i think i have something here this could be fun <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's- laughs> it was one of my favorites this year by the way i have to just throw that out there i mean every time i i, I remember making my own gloves this season and just kind of going, how did, how did they do that? Like, that is so like, I'm trying to over here, trying to figure it out myself and everything. But yeah, that was one of my favorite things this season. Awesome. No, I appreciate that. I, uh, in all honesty, it just came out of the blue, but like one of the things that I was always, you know, advised or coerced from is relying too much on your gloves. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that's no fun. <laughs> But it was me more or less, you know, thinking, what is a creative way so they're not saying that it this is a crutch? Right. Because I've seen too many stories about, you know, people who, or at least monsters who did rely on that and they would have their asses handed to them, you know? Yeah. But it was fun. At the end of the day, this was a great little tool that I had, but not the only thing. That's the thing. I've seen a lot of characters and a lot of scare actors in the past, even before I even started working at haunt that would rely on one thing and that would be their entire thing even if it was you know a character choice mm-hmm. but again i digress <laughs> i mean you you had something 
that was unique to you. And, and and another thing that was that was one of my favorites too is you kind of bending backwards, almost in the way of of the best way you can describe it is kind of something you'd see out of The Exorcist. Um, but that's 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 another fun one to do. How was that scaring guests like that? Where, where did you get some awesome, funny reactions from those from d- doing that alone? Well, again, with that hair, it definitely made a bigger you know visual moment. So half of them would you know get scared, like especially with the ones that would get scared. Like there would be times where I would just you know stop my pace going one way, flip, like, you know, bend myself backwards, and then just start walking towards them you know, with my back still bent, just move, like jaggedly moving my head back and forth just to keep that, you know, just visceral, you know what I mean? Right. The the other half were, I guess in a sense, picking up what I was putting down, the fact that I was a drag queen. There you go. So a lot of the times I would be getting, you know, yes, queen, word, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> Because like, a lot of times it would just open up the door for the more fun interactions, the more comedic. I would at some points I would, you know, invoke the spirit of T. S. Madison. Yep. I mean, she's still alive, but and just scream out, 22 witches. <laughs> I mean, the full thing is 22 witches, bitch, but I I'm gonna say that on street. But yeah. So tempted. So tempted just to pull that out. <laughs> Oh, what can you do? That's a fun one right there. That is so <laughs> fun. Oh man, I mean it sounds like you had one hell of a year with Ghost Town. I mean, that is just it's so fun to kind of to get into that zone. Now, um another thing that I'm really fascinated about with you is is the your your drag life. I mean, that is just uh talk to us about that. Talk to us how uh, how much fun you have doing it and I mean, you you look nice and dressed up right now. Like, talk to us about this look, too. I love this look. It kind of reminds me of some Borderlands. I don't know if you've ever heard of that game, but this is what that look kind of reminds me of. I have. I Unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to play it. Right. Maybe maybe on my bucket list or, I guess, bucket video game list. But, I mean, for me, my drag definitely lends itself to, again, the darker side. I mean, where I'm at right now, actually, I'm – Actually, in my car, about to uh, once we're done here, gonna get ready for a gig in West Hollywood. Nice, actually. congratulations! This is what we yes, do. This is what we do. We multitask. We are hustling. Yes, I like it. Respect it. Like, what does the Beyonce say? The it was like what a diva is a female version of a hustler. I, I don't know. Beyonce ain't my queen. <laughs> I know they're, they're all gonna come for me now. <laughs> No, don't don't you try me? No, <laughs> no. Um, if anything, my my queen is Amy Lee of Evanescence. There you I'm go. Like that. There you but, go. <laughs> like a lot of my drag does happen in the West Hollywood area, and with it being this dark, visceral, and at times fucking scary, it definitely lends itself for me being a standout. I am I am the goth. Queen of the Dead of West Hollywood. And that is, you know, a Beto title that I carry with pride, in all honesty. I go. love this. This is, with this bodysuit, this is just something I just put on just for you. Just something. There you go. Now, later on, I'm going to be wearing something a little bit bigger. I just, I don't think it would have fit in my car. That's all. <laughs> you got to dress a little comfortable <laughs> until you put on the, the, the big reveal, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I was even having issues with our having worries about this hair. Was it going to fit into frame? Was it even going to fit into the <laughs> top of my car? But, hey, it looks, yeah. it looks perfect. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's perfect. It looks perfect. <laughs> but, no, but no, with my drag, like I definitely do lend my drag towards, you know, the up and coming alternative scene here in West Hollywood. It's small, but mm-hmm. it is definitely growing. And I am definitely one of the people in the forefront of that or helping the people who are trying to get ahead with that genre in mind. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, no, I, I, I think it's, it's, um, I, I love seeing the amount of talent of people who dress up and, and, and just, and really, ex, you know, express themselves the way they, they want to and stuff. And it's amazing to see it. Um, and it's amazing to see people just be themselves, you know, and the other day, let's everyone just be themselves. Peace and love to the world. You know what I mean? Exactly. And with this, I, even for this interview, yeah, I cannot speak tonight. <laughs> Even for this interview, I definitely was, I knew that I was going to have this gig, but I also wanted to do this. And I thought, hey, 
two birds, one stone. Bye. I yes. really wanted to, you know, present myself in a way that was not only just, you know, me bringing the inside out, but also, you know, this is myself. This is my creation. You know it what I mean? Is. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. I mean, I, I, kind of what I brought, sorry, which is kind of what I brought in with, you know, my ghost town character, Amelia, that was her name, Amelia Fist, like mm -hmm. Amethyst, you know, what definitely accomplished a long-term goal that I had. Like once I found drag and I knew that I wanted to come back for scary farm, eventually, you know, scare, I wanted to create a drag character, incorporate my drag into scary farm. And I am, really humbled and honored to say that i finally achieved that goal that one in particular not just with ghost town but just in general right 100 percent. i Humble. mean to see the the i mean it's cool because like for me it was like to see your character in ghost town and to see you today i mean it's the hair that's iconic for me when looking at your character in ghost town so like seeing you today it's kind of like seeing the uh the uh the real world you and i love and it was cool it was awesome i mean it was just it, it it was like a comforting knowing that I knew exactly who you were and then I got to see more of who you were. So that's what I liked about it. That really make that I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Of course. Of course. Anytime. Anytime. Um I mean, for those who are interested in and in wanting to kinda keep up as to like you who you are and, and what you do year round, where can they find you on social media? Well, my main social is definitely Instagram. It's probably the most visual medium that I have. It's the one I've built the most, you know, audience with. Mm -hmm. So anybody who is watching or will be watching eventually, I know you put out the link. Um, my Instagram is Blackwater underscore S. There it is. Selena Blackwater, but just Blackwater. Yep. Like Black I've actually thought about it. I've actually thought about now integrating my my haunt name into my drag name. So how does let me try it out. Selena Tetanus Blackwater. How about that? Yes, my haunt name is Tetanus, by the way. Hi, I like that. how's it going? My haunt name is Tetanus. How's it going? <laughs> oh <laughs> man. That that actually does sound good though. That that whole full name. I mean, we gotta get that like get a trademark copyright and there you go. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, most queens have drag race to, you know, try and get onto. I'm trying to get onto Dragula. There which, you go. Which actually has a uh, a former hot monster in season one nice. as one of the competitors. If you ever seek her out, Frankie Doom. Or, okay. uh, I don't know if I should dead name them, but Frankie Doom. She was part of Carnival at one point. Awesome. I mean, that, I mean, that's cool to see that we're even having our own people get part of this. You know what I mean? It's one thing to get people in the community of horror, but to get people that are in the, in the haunt community and who scare at events, especially at, at, at knots and stuff. I mean, you got my support. Let's do it. Let's get you on there. Yeah. Well, once I get onto there, we could definitely start trademarking tetanus in there as well. There we go. I'm still surprised that that is my haunt name, but I carry that with a, as like a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> as you should, as you should. I mean, that's, that's a sacred thing right there. Well, I mean, thankfully, the makeup is kind of covering the skirt a little bit, but you know what? I It's still a great conversation starter. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I love it. I love it. Well, uh, I want to thank you, my friend, so much for, for taking the time. Um, I know you're incredibly busy, but I can't. I, I'm very thankful that you took the time to to talk with us today about your character in Ghost Town and about your your life in in the world of drag. I mean, um, congratulations to continued gigs that you keep getting, and 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 good luck with everything that comes your way. I mean, you have a you have a bright future ahead of you. I know it. Well, once again, thank you so much for having me, and I will. Well, come fiftieth, I will definitely see you in the fog <laughs> oh 100 percent. it's gonna be it's gonna be the 50th is gonna be a huge party and we're we're here for it we can't wait yeah it's gonna be a lot of well fun. now that i know what you'll look like it's gonna be a lot more fun now there you <laughs> go bam there you, can, you can find me i'll be chilling and and you know exactly there it is right there be like oh there he is okay here we go on that bench by kmart Isn't yeah that that's it yeah Oh, now that's a place. Now that's a great place to get some good slider scares. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, no. uh, but again, uh, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, make sure to smash that like button and leave some comments down below letting 
us know what you guys thought about today's episode. Um, if you guys are brand new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification viewer every time we put up a new video. Subscribe there, see? Yeah, do it. I love it. Or if you'll see this face, and it will haunt you. It will haunt you before you go to bed tonight. Before it's you the go eyes. To bed. It's the eyes. The eyes right there. <laughs> I do like the contacts, by the way. The contacts are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I... <laughs> I don't know why, like late season, I decided just to like pop this one in with my purple one. I was like, ooh, that is perfect. Perfect. I mean, it goes good with the theming and everything. So there it is. Uh, <laughs> you can find us on social media at Nights of Horror on Twitter and at the Nights of Horror on TikTok and Instagram. With all that being said, I'm your host, Anthony. Selena Blackwater. That's you until we meet again. Until we meet again into the fog. We'll see you guys real soon.